absolute Broadway at its very, very best. I thought it was amazing. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> Outstanding. It was beautiful. It's sumptuous, I would say. It was amazing. Stunningly beautiful. I had it I had a tear actually a couple of times. Rogers and Hammerstein were ahead of their times. They were attracted to stories that had, among other problems that characters face with each other, realizing where they come from, what they know, what they've been taught, and how they have to deal with the cards that life plays you. And they all, you know, they all have to struggle with it. I mean, you know, the, ki the king of Siam with an English school teacher. What does it take to produce what critics are calling the most ravishing show you may ever see? Let's go behind the scenes and find out with Australia's leading lady of stage and screen, Lisa McHugh. I tend to take ages to get ready for a show. I'm one of those people that get here very early and just get my feet on the ground. Good morning. Good morning. This is how we arrive at the theatre. No makeup, hair, still in curls from last night. Come on in. This is the, uh, the inner sanctum of the theatre. This is our green room. Hey, first stop, let's go to the wardrobe department. Knock, knock. This is our incredible wardrobe team. Are you fixing things, Simone? Because they've been broken. So, yeah, see, we get snagged on things backstage. And this is part of my gold dress over here. Roger Kirk has done all of the designs on the show. Is the King and I a good test for any designer? If you muck up the King and I, you shouldn't be doing it. Because, like, it's such a beautiful thing to do. You know, it's the 1860s period, as well as the exotic Thai culture. It is a fantastic thing to design. So, Roger, have you spent more this time around than you did on your last production of The King and I? Well, I know I've even bumped it up from the Broadway production. And the Broadway production in 1995 cost $1.2 million or something. We prided on ourselves as being authentic. And so a lot of the fabrics came from Bangkok. We had the king's costumes and things beaded in India because that's the only way you can get the old-fashioned hand embroidery done. Bangkok, the guy makes all the hats and the masks. These are all authentic. Thai silks we buy. There's a lot of trouble gone to reproducing it all again. Roger, thanks very much for your time. Pleasure, Lisa. For these guys down here, having to maintain it eight times a week, these costumes are worn, so they have to make sure that they they stay intact. Of course, we've got the understudy costumes, and so we make doubles on everything, pretty much. Triples in this case. Triples for this. So, so this beautiful King's throw over, yeah. you've got to make three times. Oh, this one's my favourite. This is Simon of Lecree. This is beautiful. He does this amazing dance number in this, but this, is, this one's my favourite. I love it. And on stage, when the lights hit the jewels, nobody's looking at anything else except for him. Backstage, so there's a bit of activity happening now because we're just starting to gear up for a show. The, the water supply, vital. This is for the beginning of Act 2. These are all of the skirts that are lowered down for um, the ladies to put on and it's the only place that we've actually got room in this enormous building to put them. So the logistics involved in The King and I are pretty extraordinary. Now we're entering stage right side of the main deck and um, as you can see it's all dark now. I love it when the theatre's like this because all along here, um, this is all of the fly tower, so all of these ropes along here, it's all on mechanisms so that's, that's what lowers all of these beautiful cloths in and out of the theatre. You can have a look at the theatre and when it's empty and it's... It's always a pretty magic place to be. And now we're moving into um, Prompt Corner, which is where the show is called from. And in behind here, this is kind of the nerve center in through here where the show's called. So our stage manager will sit here and just have a series of calls going and lighting cues. So they call all of the changes, they make sure the set piece is moved and, and Darren who sits here is kind of, he's our boss. This is our wonderful sound department who are making us audible to all because people like myself wouldn't be heard. Teddy Tahu Rhodes, on the other hand, he can be heard anywhere. Um, the voice is so big. We've had to build a special little hut for me to get changed in because my dresses are so enormous. So these are all of my beautiful crinolines that I wear and um, they, they are so beautifully made. Anthony Phillips um, 
who's an extraordinary craftsman, has made all of my gowns. So these are all of the overskirts, but what's not here are my giant skirts, which um, I think one of them is almost kind of, it's probably about four metres wide. It's, it's so big. These are two of our biggest set pieces. This is the King's Throne. And then this piece over here, is our schoolroom, and so these are on a on a big set piece called a truck, and they get trucked down, um, down through the centre, and uh, this is where I spend quite a bit of my time as Anna Leon Owens, the teacher. But there's someone who's going to tell you a lot more about it is um, is our designer Brian. I love to be able to put something fabulous on stage and have an audience respond to it. It would be a very very strange place for Mrs Anna to find herself in because that's what the story is all about. I wanted it to be as authentically Thai, Siamese as possible. I'd been in Thailand quite a few times. We saw everything we could see that would be helpful for the show. So what do you do? Do you distill it down? Do you, do you strip it back? No, I think you just try and put as much of that onto the stage as possible. And I did get a wonderful book on the Royal Palace full of photographs that the King had taken by accidentally going into a, a room in the palace that I should, probably shouldn't have gone into and convincing them to sell it to me. On this production, we've got the added bonus of 21,000 Swarovski crystals. Starting with how stunning it is physically, I mean, the set and the costumes are more stunning than I think any other production of The King and I has ever been. I, I still love the grandeur of the physicality of this production. I mean, the gold throne, the up center, especially in theaters in this country, in Australia, where they have depth, and you can really bring it down. When it was on Broadway, those Broadway theaters are so small that you couldn't bring it too far. You could never take it too far upstage. There wasn't too much upstage to go to. So that kind of stuff is just is just magnificent. Knock knock. I'm coming in to pick on you. Oh great. <laughs> this is our wonderful props department. And right now you're fixing Making up some letters. These are my letters of agreement with the King. But these guys have worked absolutely tirelessly because it's a big prop show, this it's one, isn't very, it? It's a very, very big prop show. This is a high maintenance show. So yeah. we have a lot of large props to deal with mm -hmm. and we have a lot to maintain as mm. we go through. Because mm. they cop a beating on stage. Oh well. As but we, do. But you're very important to us and we couldn't do it without you. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's All right. a pleasure. I don't know who were the poor people that gave up their hair for this show. These are the beautiful headpieces that the girls wear down. And if they're just, it's so beautiful on stage. And as a mum who makes some of her kids' outfits for special days at school, I look at this and think, oh, if only I could do this, reproduce this at home.